What's up guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and today we're going to be setting up the control surfaces on the all new Freewing B2 Spirit. Uh, this is a brand new model from Motion RC and Freewing and it's pretty incredible. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you got to check it out over at MotionRC.com. Uh, they are sold out, but I'm sure they're going to be getting more in. Now a couple of caveats about this video, this is the pre- uh, maiden setup, right? So I have not flown this airplane yet. Uh, this is all based on, uh, you know, the setup based on the book setting, real world flight experience from people who have flown them. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get you some great information and some easy methods on how to set these up. Now, a couple of prerequisites. You are going to need to have a six channel receiver bound up to your airplane. In your receiver, you're going to want your throttle, your aileron, your elevator, your rudder, your landing gear, and a six channel that's going to control the mode selection of the Freewing E52 gyro that is included with the B2. Now, as far as the model setup in your transmitter, you're going to want to bind it up to a standard model, so a standard acro model with normal wing type and normal tail type, right? So one aileron, one elevator, one rudder, throttle control, and gear. And that's it. All of the special mixing required for the Delta kind of Elevon setup that's going on in the B2 is all done in that Freewing E52 gyro. So you don't need to have any additional settings there. So with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So obviously you need your airplane. You're going to need your transmitter. You're also going to need... Uh, a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of needle nose pliers. Now I've got a clamp here. This is optional. I'll be using that to clamp the clamshells down. And I've got a couple of pieces of balsa here to prevent the uh, foam from getting smashed. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up a couple of things in the transmitter that's going to make the uh, adjustment of the drag rudder is really easy for us. So the first thing that I want to do is we're going to go into our servo setup. We're going to go over to the rudder and we're going to change the travel down to 70%. Now, what I found is, uh, and I've already set up the, uh, the drag rudder on the left wing of the airplane, 70% is that sweet spot that at neutral, you are going to be uh, about halfway open on that clamshell of the drag rudder, you know, and full uh, direction on your rudder one way or the other is gonna cause one side to open and the other side to close down. So in order to get it to close down proper and get that neutral point to be about 45 millimeters uh, from, uh, from end to end, 22.5 from center, uh, we're going to want around 70% full travel on the servos. Now, the difference may vary a bit for you, but that's where it is for me, is 70%. Now that we've got that done, we're also going to set up a quick mix. And don't worry if you're not familiar with mixing, this is really easy. So we'll go down here to mix one. And what you want to do is select normal. And for the first selection here, we're gonna to want to pick a switch. I'm gonna pick switch D, which is our long switch here. And there we go, we've got D, and we wanna mix that into rudder, which is our second selection. There we go. And then we're simply gonna set the rate to 100% on both sides. Okay, and now, okay, so the mix is turned on. So now we can go back to our main page. If we scroll one over to our monitor screen, we can see what happens uh, when we flip that switch. So now you can see that our rudder is in the neutral position at zero. If I go full left rudder, we'll be at negative 70. If I go full right rudder, we'll be at plus 70. Right, so that is our travel limits. And when I flip the switch up here that I have set for my mix, if I flip it down, I go to 70. 
If I flip it up, I go to a negative 70. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna lock it into either full right rudder or full left rudder for us so we don't have to keep moving the stick while we're adjusting the, uh, the drag rudder. So right now we'll put that at neutral. And the last thing that we want to check in our radio setup is that our aux channel that we have our E52 gyro mode channel set up on is gonna be at negative 100. So I've got it set up on aux one on my receiver and we've got it set to negative 100. That's gonna put it in basic gyro mode on that free wing E52 gyro that comes in the B2. Uh, if you have it in either 100, so 100 is gonna put it in trainer mode, so it's always gonna to try to be self-leveling. It's gonna make the control surfaces do a lot of weird stuff uh, when we flip the plane upside down. And the um, I think the, the center selection is like attitude hold or something like that. So. Uh, what we want it in is negative 100 on the gyro mode selector. Basic gyro mode is what you want. All right, so now we're looking at the right-hand clamshell of the drag rudder system, and we'll go ahead and move our switch uh, that we have the mix set up on to go ahead and close that rudder, right? So... That clamshell's now as closed as it's gonna get uh, with that 70% mix that we have in there, or I'm sorry, the 70% travel uh, that we have on that servo. So that's the maximum uh, travel that we're gonna see there. So now what we wanna do is adjust the control linkages until this is fully closed. And what we'll do is go ahead and remove these four screws and we'll come back and show you that fully removed here in just a second. All right, so now with that panel removed, what we're gonna do is remove the ball links from the servo side of that servo horn. And we're gonna leave the ball links connected to the control surface horns uh, where that clamshell is. All right, now you can see that we have those ball links removed uh, from the servo side and you know, those control horns are just flapping around in there. Now what we want to do is I'm going to use a clamp to clamp these clamshells shut and even with the exterior uh, portion of the, uh, the tip of the wing. All right, so here you can see I've got those two pieces of balsa uh, that are clamped uh, underneath the the clamp here. Now, again, you don't have to do this. You can just continue to adjust that link uh, to get the top and bottom halves where you need them. But I find this keeps the, the clamshells nice and steady while we adjust our ball links. And I use that balsa there so I don't scratch up the paint or anything. And it keeps everything nice and centered up. All right, now you're just simply going to take your ball links and adjust them until they fit over the uh, the balls on the servo horn. So you can see that we need to, uh, we're gonna need to shorten that one up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and shorten it up and get it back on there. Yep, and so we've got this one shortened up and now we've got the other control rod and we need to shorten that one up a little bit too. We'll go ahead and shorten that one up uh, by just tightening up the uh, the ball link uh, side here, the collar, uh, we'll just tighten that up on the rod, and we'll just keep uh, adjusting until we get it to fit over the rod, uh, but it only takes a few turns to get it there. And here we can see we've got that control rod adjusted, and that just slips right on over there now, and we can go ahead and pop that back onto the ball link. All right, so we have that outer control rod pop back onto the ball link. You can see back here, I've gone ahead and removed my clamps. So now my clamshells are in that fully closed position. Now if I exercise that switch, that brings them back to their neutral position. This is their fully open position. And what we should see is that at our fully open position, we're going to be sitting right around that 45 millimeter point. All right, so here we can see our clamshells at neutral are almost exactly 
45 millimeters. And when we close them, they close up nice and tight, 45 millimeters. And that is our open position. And that is at 70% travel on the servo. So now we'll go ahead and reinstall that plate. And you just repeat this process for the left side of the plane. All right, next we're gonna get into the setup of the control surfaces. So on the B2, we have four control surfaces. We have our exterior control surfaces that are actually on the wing that, that gets plugged into the fuselage. And you'll see right here is the seam where the wing and the fuselage made up. And that comes down to a point right here between the, the inboard control surfaces and those outboard control surfaces. So in the book, it refers to these um, control surfaces, the outer control surfaces as the ailerons and the inner control surfaces as the elevator. Now for the purposes of what we're gonna be doing and the way that we're gonna be uh, you know, going over how to set these up, we're only gonna be adjusting uh, one of these or actually measuring it out. We're gonna adjust all four, but right now uh, what you can see is kind of out of the box, Everything is set up to be kind of, you know, even. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's set up to be even with that center point uh, there on the fuselage. <clears throat> and and the same thing holds true for the right side of the airplane. So right now the airplane is upside down. So we're looking at the left side here. So what we want to do is we want to adjust the elevator, or yeah, the elevator, uh, to have eight degree or eight millimeters of up elevator deflection. Now in the book, it calls for three millimeters, but just based on some feedback that I've gotten and uh, uh, Jeremy Soltz video and, you know, talking to several people that have flown the plane, you know, they say that somewhere in that, you know, six to eight millimeters is what you want. So we're gonna go ahead and set these at eight millimeters and then we're gonna use our transmitter to help us line up everything and get everything adjusted real quick without any further measurements. So we're gonna measure out eight millimeters on the, um, on the inner control surfaces, the inboard side, uh, and that's our, our elevator. And then we're gonna use that as a reference to measure everything else. So kind of follow along with what we're doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop off the uh, the control link. <clears throat> and I've already got a set of calipers set up here and they should still be set, let's see. Yeah, so 8.01, I mean, that's, <laughs> I'll take it a hundredth of a millimeter off, you know, we're, we're gonna be fine, right? So what I wanna do is just kind of measure from the center point here to the center point of the elevator as we come down. Uh, and we're just gonna adjust this. Now, right now, my trims on the transmitter are set at zero. So this is, uh, you know, zero trim. So we're gonna pop off this uh, control link, lengthen it up a little bit, and get the um, left-hand elevator measured down to, uh, down to eight millimeters. Now, it doesn't matter which one you do, the left or the right-hand side, this method will work either way. So let's go ahead and pop that off and uh, get it um, down to eight degree or eight millimeters of deflection. All right, so we went ahead and lengthened the control rod here and you just unscrew the, uh, the ball link uh, to lengthen it. And again, the airplane's upside down, so it's deflected down, but that is up elevator, right? So. If we measure that out, again, our caliper is set to eight uh, millimeters. And we can see there that from the center to the center, we're at about eight millimeters. Now, what we're gonna do at this point is rather than do the exact measurements on each one of these, I'm gonna take the trim of my transmitter and we're gonna adjust that trim until that control surface is perfectly centered with that center piece there. All right, so that feels pretty good. 
Yeah, that's great, right there. So now I have my trim set in my radio to bring this control surface back to level. Now because, and you'll be able to see that over here, because the control surfaces move at different angles or at different rates, right? So the, the inboard moves at a different rate than the outboard because of just the length of the control arms and the throw of the servo and everything. So you'll see that they don't move exactly the same, right? So by centering up this one, uh, where, you know, at zero, it's at eight millimeters, by centering that up with the trim, if I center up all of the rest of these now, where you can see that they're, they're all slightly off from center at this point, what we're gonna do is center up each one of these and then bring the trim back to zero. Uh, and you'll see that everything uh, is perfect at that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these to be centered up and then we're gonna adjust the trim and see what happens. All right, so now we have, uh, we still have the trim adjusted to have the, uh, the elevator uh, level with that center point. Uh, where the wing and the fuselage made up. So you follow that down, that seam, till you get to that center point, and that's where you measure your reference from for the elevator. Now, we had at zero trim, adjusted that to have eight, eight millimeters of deflection, right? And then we adjusted the trim where it was nice and level, or nice and even with that center piece. And now we have adjusted the other three surfaces, so our aileron, and our other elevator and our right aileron to all be nice and level. Now, what I want you to watch here is, you know, as we adjust those, you can see that the, you know, the elevator and the aileron all move at different rates. So now we're gonna adjust the trim back to zero. And we've got everything perfect on all the sides, right? So we're right at eight millimeters here, and we can go ahead and measure that out with the calipers. So again, we see center to center, it's right at eight millimeters, and the only one that we had to measure was one of them, all right? And then we've got the proper amount of deflection in our ailerons as well, for the, uh, the eight millimeters that we're giving to our elevator. And you'll be able to see that as we move through the, uh, the range of the up elevator and down elevator, that as we get to center, everything lines right up. Perfect. All right, so now we've got all of our control surfaces set up, so we'll go through a run of how all the control surfaces behave depending on the stick input that you're giving the aircraft. So on full up elevator, you're gonna notice that all four control surfaces deflect up. So it's just like elevons on any other kind of wing. So you'll see all four control surfaces are deflecting up. When we go down elevator, we'll see the same thing. So we're pushing that stick forward. When we go right aileron, I want you to look at the drag rudders. There is a little bit of rudder, um, there's a little bit of rudder mixed in with the aileron movement. So we go full right, and you'll see that that right drag rudder opens up a little bit. So it actually has a little bit of coordination, or rudder coordination, built in to the, uh, the gyro. I do not have that set in the radio. So we go right aileron, you'll see that the both right surfaces go up and the left surfaces go down. And when we go left aileron, the same thing holds true. You'll see the left surfaces go up and on right aileron, they go down. Now, again, pay attention to that uh, drag rudder on the left side when I go full left aileron, so left roll, that uh, that drag rudder will open up a hair, and when I go right, it will close up. And there is no mix when we're controlling the pitch angle of the aircraft.
Pretty simple, about the same as you would expect with any flying wing. Now, before we go flying, we wanna make sure that we turn off the mix that we have set up on that switch because you don't wanna accidentally hit that in flight. It will, uh, it'll probably make you wreck your plane. So let's go and disable that mix. We're gonna go in here, go down to mixing. We'll go over here and we'll just set that to inhibit. All right, and now you say when we flip the switch, it no longer moves our drag rudders. So now you'll be good to go for your maiden flight. All right, guys, so that's all there is to setting up the control surfaces and those drag rudders on the all new Freewing B2. If you have any questions, be sure to leave those down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer those as soon as I can. Hopefully we'll be doing the maiden on this within the next week, uh, at the latest next weekend. Uh, the weather here in Atlanta right now is pretty nasty, so we just gotta wait for Mother Nature to open up a window for us so we can get out there and do it. So you're not gonna wanna miss that, so be sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss that maiden flight. I hope you guys all have a great day and happy flying.